So let's see, what in what order do I want to do this? Um, I guess um, I could answer the question here first, and then I will go into more depth beyond what you need to know to answer this question. So let me first uh, start with the right answer. <laughs> so the distinction of external and internal forces, it kind of depends on what, what you define your system as. So I'm going to say yes. Internal forces are forces acting into the system from outside. That doesn't kind of sound like it. That sounds external to me. Acceleration of a body is mostly directly associated with the net external force without regard to internal forces. Actually, yes. And this is what I want you to demonstrate uh, with the help of a simulation. Um, external forces are exerted from the system onto its surroundings. Yeah, this one is, I think, meant to, I put this here to confuse you. Um, I guess uh, the thing to remember is that when we describe forces, we describe forces onto a body. So, you know, this, I'm actually a bit ambivalent on this one. It could be yes. Uh, my inclination is to say no, because um, we wouldn't really, if I were drawing a force diagram of the surrounding, then I would describe that force. I would illustrate that force as a force on the surrounding. But if I'm drawing a force diagram of the system, I wouldn't uh, include those forces, uh, except that <laughs> from Newton's third law, there should be a reaction force on the system. So let me not check it for now and just to see how it's, yeah. <laughs> so, so this is the tricky choice. Uh, could go either way. So what I want to illustrate here is uh, first this point here, that acceleration of a body is most directly associated with the net external force. So uh, I spent some time setting up this uh, simulation and testing it. And um, I think there are some aspects here that I need to show and illustrate. Oh, let me do it this way. I'm just going to run the simulation once. And then I will uh, bring it back to this point and show you the features here. So I'll just run the simulation for like 10 seconds or so. Um, so this is what it is. I think it's kind of slightly chaotic because it, um, uh, I, I don't think it's uh, deterministic. Each time you run it, it runs slightly differently. So <laughs> that's the simulation. Uh, there are some features here. Uh, one is, I think that's important to illust um, explain, is that the friction between this box and the ground, it's a zero. So let me show you the material property here. Friction, that's zero. And here, uh, material property, friction, it's a zero. Um, I hope that uh, may be slightly surprising because when you saw me run the simulation, it wasn't going anywhere. And, you know, it's one thing if uh, it's not going anywhere because friction is holding it in place. But, like, if there's no friction, then how is it staying in place? So that's one. <laughs> and uh, two is, um, I guess this particular feature didn't have to be there. I uh, just want you to make it fun. That's why it was there. All the um, collisions here are elastic. Uh, that's what this parameter is. But you know, they don't actually have to be. The fact that the collision here is really elastic, it just makes it so that the collisions go on forever. But you know, if I want you to actually make the simulation more realistic, you know, uh, like something that I could actually build as a physical uh, demonstration, then it would be actually more realistic to have um, a scenario where as these balls bounce around, they over time slow down. So this would be what they would look like. Oh, wow, they slow down a lot quickly. <laughs> okay, that was a little too much. <laughs> so that, that was kind of why I had that set up. Let me uh, make it somewhere in between, 0 0.9. So they will eventually slow down, but bounce around for a bit. Yeah. And uh, after that, I will uh, show you one final um, setup that was kind of important in setting it up that way so that you will see uh, what you saw a few times now. Uh, okay, so all these balls are kind of bouncy, but not so unrealistic that they bounce forever. So this is, 
they'll bounce around for a while. They over time, each collision slows them down, and they eventually come to a stop. And this is an illustration of how internal forces have no effect on the acceleration of the entire system as a whole. And in order to have the demonstration, it was important that I set up this way. Let me use this visualization tool to show if you've lost this. So these balls, uh, they all have the same mass. I made sure they all have one kilogram mass. And I set it up so that on net, um, they have a zero velocity. So for the ball that's going to the right at uh, like five meters per second, there's another ball that's going to left at five meters per second. And the same deal with the ones that were moving at about 10 meters per second. So, uh, so let me mess up some of these conditions and you will see what I mean. So if I have a zero, uh, so this is at rest. So I'm only keeping the balls that are moving to the right with some velocity. And when I run the simulation with that then, so now if you look at this entire system as a whole, they're kind of moving a little bit to the right. So let me run the simulation and let's see what happens. Now, um, the reason it's, uh, I didn't want to start out with that is it's a bit chaotic because uh, at least, uh, I guess it depends on what you choose to look at. So I'm gonna slow down the simulation so that I have some time to talk. Um, it depends on what you choose to look at. If you choose to look at a single ball, then it is kind of bouncing around. So, okay, it's kind of crazy. And if you choose to look at the box, then box is also, you know, kind of moving, stopping, moving, stopping. So it doesn't quite illustrate as well. Um, what I'm hoping, what I wanted to illustrate from the homework question that acceleration of a body is associated with the net external force. So when you look at this uh, interaction here, um, the only forces that you can see here are internal forces. That, and let me show you what I mean. So this is the few forces. And you know, I'm going to um, disable gravity because although gravity is there, um, they only act vertically. So I'm just gonna ignore any bouncing up and down vertically so that I'm not so confused. <laughs> so get rid of gravity and let me get rid of the normal forces. Well, actually normal force, you know, I think I need to keep the normal force. So, um, so with those forces illustrated, so right now there's a normal force from the ground that's pushing up the thing. And let me, okay, I need to <laughs> run and stop the simulation carefully here. Okay, um, you saw a big arrow just briefly flash as this ball was striking the wall. And uh, let me see if I can, <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit hard. So each time these balls either collide with each other or collide with the box, um, those are exerting a force and they are the internal forces. And let me just, uh, I can't quite wonder if, uh, I wish I, there was a way, oh, oh okay, okay. Oh, I caught at the right moment. So right now, the simulation is showing normal force or the contact force between these two balls. That's what these two big arrows that are labeled with the N for normal force are. Um, so, and these are internal forces. These are force between two parts of uh, something that we have chosen to call a system. And you can see some features in these internal forces. Um, one is that they always occur in pairs. So this, this arrow that's pointing to the right here, that is force on this highlighted ball from this ball. It's pushing that ball to the right. And this arrow to the left is force on this ball from this ball here. And you can see that they are in pairs. And uh, let me run the simulation for a bit and catch another one like that. Uh, okay, there's one. 
force between this ball and here. I want to catch one with the box, just because it'll be more interesting. Okay, uh, there it is. So this ball is now colliding with the wall here. Let me just uh, move the screen a little bit to the right. And this ball is pushing the box to the right. That's what this uh, end here on this box is. And the box is pushing this ball to the left. That's what this end is. And uh, these, are into, these are examples of internal forces, force between two objects that are part of one system. And uh, they don't necessarily have to be separated system. They can be just all, all one thing. And um, what's uh, important about these internal forces is that they demonstrate Newton's third law. These are the action and reaction forces. And these two labels are interchangeable completely. I could actually choose to call this the action force. It's the action of the box pushing on the ball to the left. And I could, uh, then this would be the reaction force. And if you just swap the label, then it, it still makes sense. You could call this the action force of the ball pushing the box to the right, and the box reacts with the uh, reaction force to the left on the ball. So, and there, there's a symmetry to this interaction. And that symmetry is why um, when you have these internal forces on the net movement of the system as a whole, it doesn't affect the net movement of the system because these two pairs will just end up canceling out when you try to calculate the net force. The only thing that results in the net force is um, the forces from the outside, like the ground. This end here is an external force from the ground, which we have chosen not to include in our system. I see a hand, or I saw a hand, uh, if I just addressed your question, great. If not, please feel free to unmute and ask or put your question into chat. Uh, forgive me if this question is dumb, but why do the balls look like pie charts? Or is that just a question that only I have? That's a great question, and it looks like a pie chart, mainly so that the simulation can illustrate the orientation of the circle. So, okay. yeah. So I think if you run, if I run the simulation a little bit, I think, do you see it ever? Oh, you know what? You don't see it, um, you don't see it rotating because I, let me just go back a little bit here. Oh, wait, how far back do I have to go? <laughs> All this topic. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, redo. All right, uh, or redo again. Okay, undo here. Okay, so um, the reason these are not rotating in this simulation right now, is one, they don't have velocity right now. So let me give them their velocities back. Um, and uh, let me call this minus 10. And uh, so we haven't talked about torques yet in this class. We'll get to that later in the semester. Uh, without the friction, there's nothing that can apply a torque on these things. So let me just change their properties so that they have some friction. Um, I don't know, friction of 0.5. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, their properties reverted back to where they have uh, 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 they are they uh, they are completely elastic. They don't lose any energy as they bounce, but the friction will cause them to lose some energy. So, but with this change now, as they bounce around, they should have some ability to get rotated. So let me run the simulation here and see what we see. I'm just gonna display the velocities, and yeah, that's gonna be fine. Um, yeah, and uh, let me just run the simulation a little bit slow. Uh, so, so this is just the way the system draws the circles so that if the circles rotate, you can see the rotation of the circle. Otherwise, you couldn't see that. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. so this is the illustration of um, internal forces and, um, and their, um, their properties and how, uh, because they always occur in pairs, that's what Newton's third law says, that internal forces one affect their, affect the net acceleration of the, the entire system. Um, so let me just uh, show that one last time. So friction of the ground is zero, friction of the, um, friction of the boxes, uh, let me turn that back to zero. 
And um, when I run this simulation, it's not gonna go anywhere because the only forces between them are uh, internal forces and those internal forces won't accelerate them around. Um, so, yeah. I think that uh, mainly what I want you to talk about, let's see here. Oh, and uh, yeah, distinction of uh, what is external and what is internal force, it depends on your definition of what a system is. And this is what I mean. So I've been uh, trying to call this entire thing a system. And the uh, thing is no one really, I don't have to, I can choose to call this my system. And if I choose to call this single ball my system, then, uh, then let me see if I can catch it in the uh, collision with the wall. Oh wait, few forces. Okay, it's now colliding with the wall. So if I choose to call this, let me not show gravity again because it's cluttering up my diagram. Um, if I choose to call this a single ball, my system, then before I was describing this force on the ball from the wall as one of the internal forces. That's why there was a reaction force on the a wall. And you know I have action, reaction force, Newton's third law. Those are the pairs of internal forces. But if I choose to call this ball my entire system, then this force from the wall, that is an external force. And that external force is accelerating this ball. I think I can... Oh wait, it doesn't let me illustrate the uh, acceleration, but I can do this. Right now, this ball has a rightward velocity, and just a little moment later, it has a leftward velocity from the acceleration due to the external force that it was just experiencing from the box. And whether I call that external or internal force, it depends on what I define as my system. When this was my system, those were a pair of internal forces, when I choose to call this my system, then it becomes uh, just one external force. 